Good morning students, this is Asha, your social science teacher. We have started uh, chapter 1 in civics, the Indian constitution. So in previous lecture or yesterday's lecture, we discussed what exactly constitution is. What constitution does, it is a set of rules and regulation by which a country is governed. It defines the type of government, powers of it. Then we discuss why do a country need a constitution? What are the main purpose or the reason for which a country requires a constitution? And uh, we discuss like the uh, mis there should not be any misuse of power, and there are some rules and regulations which country should follow. Then we discussed about the preamble of a country. What all preamble? show preamble tells us about the country's ideals and objective and honestly a preamble is an introduction of your constitution and india's constitution is one of the lengthiest constitution and today we'll discuss about the nepal um, nepal in recent past was uh, a center for a lot many political upheaval there was monarchy, then democracy, and then monarchy. There were change of power and type of government changed a lot. So what all happened there? That's what we will discuss. And through the Nepal story, we'll come to know about these two things. A constitution, why the constitution was required? Because Nepal already had a constitution. At the end, they again started writing a constitution. Constitution help us to serve as a set of rules and principles that all person in a country can agree upon on the basis they want the country to be governed. So this is the reason why they were writing a second constitution. And this include not only the type of government but also an agreement on, on certain ideas that they all believe in the country should upload. So let's start uh, the Nepal's story. Nepal was a monarchical government till 1990s. Till 1990 there was monarchy and in 1990 there were a lot many um, now Maoist insurgency and political group formed and they requested there was many uh, things coming up they were requesting for a democratic government. There was a people struggle that established democracy. So in 1990, democracy was established and it lasted for 12 years. And in October 2002, King Gyani, in reciting Maoist uprising, began interfering in government matters. And with the help of army, he did a coup and again became the head of the power. And he became, and the monarchy was again established. But what happened? Maoist joined. Uh, political parties and again the struggle started for democracy and so in 2006 uh, King Gyanir resorted the third parliament and democracy was again resorted in 2006 and in 2007 they started Nepal started writing new constitution so and their constitution was completed in 2014 the new constitution of nepal so when nepal already had a constitution why they did write a new constitution the reason is the previous constitution which they had did not reflect the ideals of the country they want to be and the for which they have fought here we discuss that same they want their constitution to reflect certain ideals that they all believe a country should have right so the old constitution does not reflect those ideals and the principles which they want their nepal to have because they got this democracy after a long struggle so they wanted that the new constitution should reflect those principles ideals for which they have struggled and fought so that's the reason why they started writing a new constitution so yesterday we discussed one of the uh, that most in, uh, nature of political system is clearly 
mentioned in constitution uh, so constitution is the nature of political system of that particular country uh, is written in that constitution plays a crucial role in laying out certain important guidelines that govern decision making with all societies so constitution plays important role in these three what are these choosing the leader save us from misuse of authority by political leaders and save us from ourselves so we'll discuss these three things of constitution one by one first choosing a leader so in a uh, democratic country choosing a leader is very important we choose our leader so that they can exercise their power responsibly on our behalf right we directly do not vote for prime minister we choose a representative and they choose their leader right the winning party which party has maximum num- who has won maximum number of seat they choose the prime minister so india is a indirect democracy i vote for a person representing my area and that has the power so there might be a case when our chosen leaders misuse power and if they misuse their power there would be a cross injustice so we'll try to understand this uh, situation by a story of a class ma- monitor it is given in your book mrs rao she is a class teacher and she is teaching children and suddenly she gets a call from a principal that she needs to go and meet him while she is going out of the class she entrusts that monitor take takes care of the class so who is monitor monitor is elected he has been elected in a class and she trust him and she gives him the authority and goes for her work and the monitor suresh uh, suresh is the monitor of class and he is a kind of a bully and he decides that anil he has not is not in good terms with anil him and he punish him so what he does as soon as mrs rao come from after finishing his her work she comes back to class he complains about anil ma'am when you were not here anil was misbehaving and talking and not listening to me whereas anil was doing nothing he complained it and what happens mrs rao says anil that you have to stay back and do that i will not disobey monitor in this case in the whole scenario what you understood monitor was a chosen leader he has to behave responsibly but he did not in fact he misused the power and what happened an innocent person anil was punished because of his misuse of power so when we are choosing a leader we need to make sure that leaders do not misuse power and in case they misuse there should be provisions to stop their misuse that's what uh, is in constitution in democratic societies the constitution often lays down rules and that guards against the misuse of authority by political leader so constitution generally mention or there are guards provided that these leader cannot misuse their power like in our constitution fundamental rights are given fundamental right is something which we'll discuss tomorrow so it equip every individual and it gives some every individual some rights so which cannot be broken or taken away by anybody you must have studied in grade 7 uh, about chapter equality right and where you have studied the story of om prakash valmiki how he was ill treated or how he was discriminated for being from a dalit class and in our constitution in fundamental right the first right is right to equality so anybody who is in power or position cannot discriminate on an individual because we have right to equality and that's the fundamental right so there are many provisions like this which safeguard an individual from the power or the use more power of the powerful people like misuse of power from the political leader or anybody so let's recap what we did today children we did the case study of nepal how nepal had change in government continuously in last few uh, 20 years 
first monarchy, then democracy, then monarchy, and then democracy, and how they have to rewrite their constitution as the earlier constitution does not reflect upon their ideals, principles, and objectives which they want their country to be. Then we discussed about choosing leader, which is a very important aspect of democratic society. And in our constitution, we give the process how the leaders will be chosen. At the same time, we put limits. We put limits to his power and we put, make sure that guards are available that he do not misuse his power and authority. Tomorrow's uh, lecture, we'll discuss about um, different other aspects like majority and minority and how we can we safeguard ourselves okay thank you that's all for today